Hey everyone, uh, welcome back. My name is Brandon. If you haven't seen my first video, be sure to check it out. I am a fourth year Canadian dental student here in... <laughs> Anyways, yeah, in Canada. I wanted to use this platform like I was saying in my last video uh, to talk about my experiences in dental school and especially bring light to the Canadian perspective on applications and all of that stuff. So if you haven't guessed by the title of the video already, um, this video is going to be about how to get into Canadian dental schools. So there's a lot of things out there for how to get into American dental schools. For the Canadian side, it's a little bit different. So I just thought, why not? A lot of my friends in the last video have been telling me that something that I wasn't doing was looking into the camera when I'm talking. So we're going to try to do better in this video. Maybe you're watching this video and you are in high school or you're an undergrad and you're really thinking about pursuing dentistry as a career, which would be a really great choice, non-biased, and you kind of just have no idea how to get started. So hoping this video helps. Uh, this video is now in 2020. Things are always changing with requirements for admissions. So everything that I'm going to talk about today is from my personal experience as well as uh, I'll have some links in the description box below for everything that needs to be substantiated. So without further ado, let's get started. There are 10 dental schools in Canada. This is vastly different from the 67 programs that are available in the US. A lot of people begin their applications applying to the Canadian schools if you're from Canada. However, there are alternatives. You can go to the States. You can also go to Ireland and you can also pursue uh, dentistry in Australia. These 10 schools are Alberta, UBC, Manitoba, Dalhousie, Toronto, Western, McGill, Saskatchewan, and the other two are French speaking schools. So there's the University of Montreal as well as Laval. But je ne comprends pas français, je ne parle pas. Je ne parle pas français? I don't speak French. So I obviously didn't apply to those two schools. So the very first thing that I tell people that are looking into applying to dental schools, the same as they would for med schools, is that you really need to look into the different programs. Particularly in dentistry, all the programs are really, really different. So all of them will evaluate their applicants differently and all of them have different requirements. For example, some will require English as a prerequisite course, whereas others may not. The other thing that you should look into is because there are so few dental schools and they're in different provinces, every province except for Ontario have in-province preference. So what that means is schools would rather accept people that belong to the province, that are from the province, so that they aren't training these applicants to become dentists for them to just leave the province afterwards. However, there are ways to kind of go about this. If you are considering, for example, going to British Columbia for dental school, you may want to consider going to UBC for an undergraduate program because for UBC, if you go to school there for two years and you're a student there and you are living there, you automatically are eligible to become an in-province um, applicant. And there are advantages to becoming an in-province applicant because usually the cutoffs are lower for the different admission scores as well as you would get priority. However, Ontario schools do not have that same preference. I believe Western may have a preference for Southwestern Ontario, but U of T in Toronto definitely does not. Additionally, if you are an applicant from Quebec, there is the CEGEP stream, which means you don't have to pursue an undergrad first. A lot of times that means that the program for dentistry is maybe a year or two longer. So instead of a four-year program, you would be looking at a five. So I guess the first point is know the school that you want to apply to. If you're going to apply broadly, make sure you do enough research that you know what the different schools are looking for. Point number two that I already alluded to is prerequisite courses. So prerequisite courses really include general chemistry, organic chemistry, biology, physics, statistics, biochemistry, English. However, like I said, the different schools want different things. In recent years, however, prerequisite courses have changed in that you don't need to just have completed these courses, there are also minimum grade for courses. So for the different schools, they can range from anywhere of a minimum grade of a B plus in the course or 
to a C minus. So often also people wonder, can you just fast track all of the prerequisite courses? Can you do them in summer school? Can you get them over with? Absolutely you can. There is one catch however, depending on the school that you apply to, you may be required to have a three-year program under your belt or some schools like Western also want a degree before applying. So just because you get all the prerequisite courses over with doesn't necessarily mean you can apply right away after. A lot of people wonder whether or not you need to have a certain degree type and the answer is no. You just need to be able to fulfill the prerequisite courses for the different dental schools. Point number three. This is about the dreaded GPA and a lot of the programs like I've been saying look at the GPA very differently. So some program may look at every year that you've completed minus your worst year if you've completed at least four years. Other programs, they take best two years. There are ways to go about um, kind of being the system and for me the best thing was knowing your strengths and weaknesses and so you have a good idea of what schools you have your best chance at. At the end of the day every program in Canada is really really strong so getting accepted to a Canadian dental school program you should be really proud of yourself. A lot of people say the minimum competitive score of a GPA of your application would be at a minimum of a 3.7. That being said there are schools that look at GPA a lot more than other schools. Everyone kind of knows that U of T has a really high cutoff for GPA. I believe in my application cycle, the average GPA for that year was like a 3.9. Other schools like, for example, Western, and I use these examples often because I'm from Ontario, so those are the two schools that I really apply to. Western looks more for like extracurriculars, the interview is really different. With that being said, grades are still very, very, very important. It's super cliche, but have a really good time in undergrad, but work really hard and pursue things that you like. And that way your GPA is going to go high because you're going to want to study that stuff. You're going to be motivated for that stuff. And yeah, another thing that I should point out for GPAs is just because you have one really bad semester or one really bad year, there are way more ways to make up for that. So don't get your hopes down if you kind of mess up in one semester. I definitely did when I was in undergrad, so there's nothing for you to really really stressed about. Okay and the last part that I kind of want to touch on is number four. Uh, this is the DAT. So it's the DAT, the Dental Aptitude Test. This is the Canadian version. There is a Canadian and there is an American version. Many American dental schools accept the Canadian DAT. With that being said, if you're going to be applying to American schools, you really need to look into whether or not they accept the Canadian DAT. Personally, I didn't even write the American DAT. I didn't apply to American schools. I just kind of took my chances in applying to Canadian schools only. The American DAT was a lot more involved. The DAT is a half day exam. It is a standardized exam for the entrance of dental school. It is really similar to the MCAT. In my opinion, it's a lot easier than the MCAT, especially the new MCAT. I did write the old MCAT prior to ever, ever wanting dentistry. So I used the MCAT material to study for the DAT material. The Canadian DAT basically comprises of four different sections. So there's the manual dexterity portion, which you are carving cylindrical bars of soap to demonstrate that you have good hand skills. The good thing is that many dental schools across Canada now don't even look at that. Hand skills, if I have anything to say about that, if you're worried, if you're like clumsy and things like that, it's definitely something you can pick up. Your hand skills are a very learned skill. Um, it's kind of like practice makes perfect. The next section is the natural sciences section. That comprises of biology and general chemistry. The difference between the MCAT and the DAT science sections is that the DAT includes other things. Things like animal behavior, ecology, which are obviously really important for dentistry because why wouldn't animal behavior be? The third section on the DAT that is Kind of the most challenging because we don't often use that part of our heads is the perceptual ability section so this section is made up of six subsections and each subsection is basically like a little puzzle in which you are testing your perceptual ability so for example you are given a 2d image in which you have to put into your head and fold it in your head and determine which 3d shape this 2d image folds into other sections involve things like a bunch of random 3D shapes that you have to be able to fit into a keyhole and you have to determine
determine which one's correct. There's a lot of different tricks on that. There's lots of videos on YouTube. That's definitely how I picked up the tricks on how to do well in that section. And then the fourth section is reading comprehension. You're given a text or an article, maybe one and a half to two pages long. And then there are questions in which you need to be able to apply what you have learned from the articles, as well as freestanding questions from the articles. So those are the four sections of the Canadian DAT. The American DAT is a little bit different because it involves a quantitative section, which has math, and there is also organic chemistry. One thing to note about the DAT is that it's not the raw score that's recorded. Instead, you're scaled against the different applicants based on the types of questions you're given, and then you're sorted into different percentiles out of 30 on each section. A lot of the schools also look at different parts of the exam. So for example, one school may prioritize the PAT section way more than something else, whereas some schools may look at the total science or the academic average of the entire DAT. Usually most people say that having over 19 on these sections makes you competitive or that's the minimum competitive average. However, the acceptance averages of these scores are usually around 21 to 22 for most schools. So I guess my biggest takeaway from this entire video is you really need to do your research on the different types of schools and really understanding what the different schools are looking for and what plays to your advantage and what is a disadvantage for you. I hope this has been really helpful for you guys. Once again, please leave any comments below for ideas for what you guys want me to talk about or if you have any questions about Canadian dental schools, I'll be happy to get to them. You can also DM me on Instagram. I don't know. I really have to work on my outros because I don't really know what to say. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, share, follow. I don't know I'm new to this, but everything should be in the description below, I hope. And I hope I see you guys in my next video.